Hey guys, and thank you for coming to our channel, Move Up With Mike at michaelglass.com. As always, we like to start off with our disclaimers, and it basically says, no matter what we do here, the choices that you make are your own responsibility. Everything we do here is for educational informational purposes. Uh, if you choose to invest, there is a risk of loss, trade at your own risk. So this is our weekly technical analysis. We take a look at the economic calendar. We look at some of the price actions at the charts so that we can identify support and resistance levels. We look at our FANG, our market leaders, and we'll also take a look at gold and crude. It is an education spotlight at the end. So Dave Ramsey says, you guys know we always like to start off with a quote. You must gain control over your money or the lack of it will forever control you. And I think that that's just a, uh, another way of saying that, you know, people say that uh, money is the root of all evil. I don't think money is the root of all evil. I think the lack of money is the root of all evil and people hustling one way or another to get money. So, you know, you got to gain control of it. And the best way to gain control of it is to have money working for you. And as you guys know, we're all here together. We believe that the stock market is a great way to do just that. So let's take a look at what happened this week. Um, for the most part, the markets were down for the week. Uh, Dow down almost 2%. NASDAQ just down, look at that, two-tenths of a point. SP down 1.3%. For the year, the Dow's down 17%, NASDAQ down 5%, S&P down 12%, almost 13%. Good news, we were down like 25%, so we have come back a good ways. Not back to the highs, but we are, have uh, come off the bottom a bit. Gold it was up 3% a week, and it's up 14% for the year. And here's the big one, crude, down 31% for the week. Look at that, down 74% for the year. Remember, gold at one point in time was $100. <laughs> so that really is the the uh, the big core event that happened over the week. The front month contract of crude oil, which was the May contract, went into negative territory for the first time ever. I mean, it used to be we used to say, you know, it, all it can do is go to zero. Well, apparently, no, it can go beyond zero. I believe the lowest point it reached was like negative $37, which means people had to pay you in order to take the crude from them. Now, part of this had to do with the, uh, you know, the contracts rolling over. Part of it had to do with what's going on with uh, Saudi and Russia. Um, so there, there, there was multiple reasons. I put out a video called WTF Crude to, that gets into more detail if you want to know what really happened there. Nothing important going on overseas. You know, besides the fact that there are countries starting to release their standards as far as the COVID-19, and so people are watching to see if there's going to be a second wave. Corporate news, Netflix had earnings this week, and they had a surge of users. And, of course, most people believe this has to do because everybody's staying at home. What do you got to do? Let's watch some Netflix. Netflix and Chill has taken a whole new meeting. Um, and then we had an additional 4 million people file for unemployment this week. So that takes a total over 25 million people, you know, since uh, mid-March have filed for unemployment. Now, going on to this week, what we're going to be looking at, we've got Google, I believe, on Tuesday, and I believe Amazon is rep reporting on Thursday. So we have two big companies that can move the market. Uh, as far as... The, Economic news, you know, consumer confidence, yeah. Uh, we'll see more about what's going on with uh, crude oil on Wednesday and GDP on Wednesday. So there's some move, potential movement we could see there. Again, GDP could tell us what is the true impact uh, on uh, COVID-19 on the economy. So we'll get some, uh, you know, the first real official reading on that. So that certainly can be the market on Wednesday. All right, so let's go take a look at the charts and see what we can see with our FANG and our indices. Okay, so here we are with gold. Um, again, it is up for the week. We do seem to have a kind of a sharp upturn line that we've got going on right here. Uh, we're above, 
I thought I clicked that. I guess I didn't. There we go. We're above 1700. We talked about this resistance support level here uh, for the past couple weeks. So we did pop our head below it, but we're right back above it. So we need to watch here 1775, 77 range. You can see the wick starting to form up here if we're going to move up there. Now, what's interesting is as the market's retracing back up, gold is also retracing back up. And, you know, typically there is an inverse relationship. So, you know, um, if, you know, gold gets back below 1700, gets back below this uptrend line, you know, we could see it go back down for those people who are optimistic, optimistic about the market's return to the highs. Now, let's go over to the other big one, crude. And what I'll do is I'll go with the uh, front month. We'll see if this one is. Okay, this is, is, is you can see right here, uh, you know, again, all the way down to the negative uh, 37. And the other thing that's interesting about crude, a lot of the brokerages have changed their uh, future margins, uh, um, intraday margins to trade crude. And some some um, aren't even letting you. I know Top Step won't even let funded traders trade crude. So um, you know there's a, there's a lot going on there with crude, um, with the volatility. And yes, we had this one crazy day, but you can see there is some t st stabilizing going on here. So perhaps you know again some of the the stuff that we saw on Thursday and Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with the futures contract. I mean, you had to go to uh, May, um, so you had to go to June. You had to move out, and um, it's going to be interesting to see how crude uh, trades for the rest of the week. Uh, I, again, saw things with Think or Swim, saw things with many brokerages changing the ability to trade crude. Most important thing is we we have several downtrend lines, uh, you know, going over here. We have a more sharper one here. I think that's the one I will take the time to draw. Let's see what we got here. This one right here. What's important about that? When we came back up here, when we came back up here. So for our crude folks, we definitely want to get it back that. And also with crude, we also want to go back all the way. Oops, not that one. Hold on a second. This one. Uh, you know, we've got the gap down area that we want to watch also. Um, but you can argue we've got another area to get above 20. Well, I guess that's 1950-ish range here. You know, we've got some swing lows in here. So that's something else to, to watch. A close above that. Um, but obviously, crude is taking a beating. Uh, from the lack of demand due to the virus and then the little tit for tat going on between Saudi Arabia and Russia, um, crude is just getting crushed. Again, down 74% for the year. Now, what about the S&P? So you can see we just kind of cycle for the week. Um, we're staying below though this 29 level. You can see the swing low that it, it kind of correlates here. So we're 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 you know we're not closing above it, which would allow us to go up and test the next level. So right now you can say because we we did have this little pop up here, but we're really right back down. So we don't really truly have acceptance to say that we're going back up. Um, uh, you can see 2700 has a little bit to, to some wicks here to watch also. So we want to stay above 2700 uh, for our bulls. You can argue that there's an uptrend line just like we saw with uh, gold, which again is always interesting because they're usually inverse. So, you know, again, that's what we're watching right now. There we go. Definitely have a wedge. Are we going to pop up? Are we going to pop lower? Um, maybe we have, you know, stimulus 4.0 coming. That's probably going to be more involved with infrastructure. As states are opening, I don't see the, the you know, the C Congress sending us more money uh, because states are opening and they're going to say, go ahead, back to work. Um, but, you know, I don't know wh which way we're going to go. Nobody does. But if I were to guess, you can see we have a nice uptrend line and, 
you know, if the, uh, more money is sent to businesses, again, we had 3.5 PPP for small businesses. Um, and again, these earnings can really push the market one way or the other based upon what they say. And remember, we also have GDP this week. So let's go to our FANG, Facebook. All righty. You can see that similar uptrend line with Facebook because it is a market leader. Uh, Facebook has accepted in above 170, clearly. We've got another gap here around 200, just above 200, um, 202 ish range. So that's something to watch as we continue to move higher. Um, you can see definitely why did we close right here? Let me switch this over to a horizontal line. And you look at all this going on right here. So it kind of makes sense this is where we stop. So we got 190 to 170, we got a range. We definitely accepted above 170. Are we gonna come back down? Are we gonna get back into above 190 and then go test this gap down and even the top of the gap? That's the next thing I would be watching for Facebook. Apple. Apple, again, same up to line that we saw with S&P 500 and with Facebook. Uh, we are staying above 275. That's good. So you can say we've accepted into this price level. Uh, we still have this, what will now be resistance of this uptrend line right here. And we've got the gap down going on also at the 300, 305 range. So, you know, uh, there certainly is a bullish movement here for Apple uh, going up here in, in, into this range between 275 and 300. We said Amazon has uh, earnings this week. Amazon is actually one of our high flyers. Look at this. Has retraced the move down and is even above it. So the move down is now going to be our support level, which is around 2190, 2188. And now you can see all these wicks up here. So that's going to be something to watch also, whether or not we can get close above these wicks. What's going to be our catalyst? Let's see what happens at our earnings on I believe Thursday. Netflix had earnings on last week. I believe it was Tuesday. Again we talked about their search and, and viewership. Notice that they also have retraced the, the move down just like Amazon and so we've got the 400, 390, 400 as our support area. Now we're just consolidating. They've had earnings so we don't necessarily have a catalyst for it to move higher. So I would definitely watch these wicks. Do not buy the highs at this time. We're accepting at above level, but I will wait for it to come back before I start going higher. Looking to go long and also watch to see if we actually come back. Uh, F-A-A-N-G. Google. <laughs> Sorry, I went blank for a second there. Google has earnings on Tuesday. Looks more like the S&P 500 and Apple. Um, you can see where we're at. We closed at 1279. We're closing at resistance. We have not accepted into this next range, which gets us to the gap down and our uptrend line. We still haven't, so we potentially could come back down to 1156 because we're still in that range. Also notice this little um, gap right here, and that's where we, uh, this down day basically went to the close of this gap up. So I would also watch this 12, 12, uh, 12, 15 range also if we come back down. Alrighty guys, it's now time for our education spotlight. And we're gonna talk about some key ingredients to a trading plan. The most important uh, ingredient to any trading plan is discipline. I mean, yes, you got to, you know, define your, your how you evaluate the market and how you're going to engage and enter the market, but you still have to have the discipline. I always tell people trading is not hard. What is hard is having the emotional st stability and to trade the plan. Uh, anybody can do a, a move average crossover if you're in the indicators or some type of imbalance with order flow or... Uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is that gets you into the market. Anybody can identify whatever that is. But do you have the, the discipline to sit and be patient for that? I think that's the hard part because people want to be in. They want to get in. They want to get in. It's like a drug. Um, so, you know, discipline is the most important part to any trading uh, plan. The second part is, and it's, again, this is why I'm saying it's second, because anybody can come up with how to get in the market. 
but can you stay disciplined to do that? Um, so the next part is how you are evaluating. Are you going to be a scalper? Are you going to be a swing trader? Uh, all of that is important. Um, so how you evaluate the market is the second part and how you define that entry. What you have to do is come up with your edge. What is it that you're good at and that you can do repetitive over and over again? And again, that's that discipline. You know, don't don't alter. You can change upon market or environments, but you have to define your edge, what you're good at and how you trade. And what people don't realize is risk management. Again, go on YouTube. There's thousands of trading setups. Go on Google. There's thousands of trading setups. And a lot of them are good. A lot of them are bad. But what tends to make them bad is that you're trying to follow someone else trade the way they trade and you're not comfortable with that so you can't trade that because you don't take the stop that they have i was in a trading room uh, years ago and a guy was successful made a lot of money every day but i couldn't make money trading the way he traded because he had huge stops and i never was comfortable with that even though i could visually see he was making money i just was never comfortable with taking the the uh the uh, stops that he was taking um, um, so you know again that doesn't mean he's a bad trader it doesn't mean that I'm a bad trader it just means that I have to be me and he has to be him and you have to be you so discipline how are you evaluating the market and how are you handling your risk so we would love to work with you Michael Glass at Com Coaching and we will help you come up with that trading plan um, as you guys know, we're, we're getting ready to do a free trading room where we're going to try to help people pass their uh, combine. So michaelglass.com gauntlet, sign up for your, your gauntlet, free money. And what's good about this is that with all these brokers is uh, changing margins with uh, their accounts for retail traders. If you get a funded account, they handle all of this margin issues. And if you're looking for self-paced education, you don't want to get coaching, you want to kind of go it at your own pace, um, great resource, michaelglass.com slash education. Over a thousand hours of trading videos. The group is called Trading Resource Group. I'm recommending them. Think about that. Here I am, a coach trying to help people. But if you're looking for videos, training on your own, a great community, Trading Resource Group is a way to do that. And this is a way to do it. michaelglass.com backslash education. Got a great system for you. So, Mike, move up with Mike on most uh, social media platforms on Facebook where learn the truth about money. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.